After we saw Civil War, a friend of mine wanted me to do a video explaining Spider-Man's relationship with Tony Stark and how similar or different it is from the comic book version. So, before we start, in order for me to compare and contrast the two Spider-Mans from comic to movie, I'm going to have to talk about Spider-Man's role in the movie. So be warned good people, this video contains spoilers from Captain America's Civil War. Okay, now that that is out of the way, this is the Justice League, and let's get to it. Okay, for me to do this right, we have to talk about the comics first, as they are a blueprint for the movie. So while it isn't the exact same story, some of the character motivations, in this case Spider-Man or Iron Man, are similar. So when we first see Tony and Peter Parker together in the Civil War comic, Tony is pretty much taking Peter under his wing, and Peter as well as Mary Jane and Aunt May lives at Stark Tower while Tony is mentoring him. Now, as I said in my Four Differences video, this Spider-Man is much older than the one in the movies, and he's been Spider-Man for over 10 years at this point, so that affects his motivations. Now when it comes to Spider-Man as a character, he has three main focuses or motivations that revolves around him being Peter Parker and Spider-Man. One is the death of his Uncle Ben, which teaches him to be responsible with his powers and to always use them to do the right thing. Number two is his love of science. Spider-Man is a very much MacGyver-styled hero that uses his smarts just as much as his powers to defeat bad guys. And the number three focus for Spider-Man is money. He doesn't do what he does for money per se, but he's just a regular guy that works a regular job, and being a full-time superhero sometimes requires resources that he doesn't have all the time. Now, those focuses is where we get back to Iron Man and the relationship that he has with Spider-Man. The first one is money. That's the easy one. Tony Stark is a billionaire with unlimited resources, and he offers financial security for Peter and his family. So that's a no-brainer. Anyone would go towards that. The second thing that kind of builds the relationship or that he plays off of is Tony is a genius and he's one of the most brilliant minds in the Earth 616 continuity. Now remember the Earth 616, whenever I say that, I'm talking about the comic book, but this does relate to the movies as well. So he's one of the most brilliant minds in the Earth 616 and Peter really looks up to that because he also is really into physics. The third motivation or focus or thing that links the two of them is Tony is so much older than Peter that he looks out for him. Peter kind of sees him as a father figure and Tony kind of sees Peter as a way to make up his relationship with his own father. So he kind of uses that and the money and the relatable love to science and physics and he takes advantage of Peter in a way. If you read the comic, you can see he kind of manipulates Peter. Now moving on to Spider-Man's debut in the Civil War movie. This Spider-Man has only been active for half a year, but we see these three focuses or motivations play out right away. Right off the bat, Peter is starstruck over the fact that Iron Man, Tony Stark, is in his apartment. You can tell right away he looks up to Iron Man and there's this back and forth they have where they're speaking in code about him being a superhero. And Tony is like, so yeah, I'm here for the youngster program that you signed up for. I saw some of your footage. The things that you have is amazing. You'd be perfect for our program. So he's basically saying, I know what you're doing. And I want to invite you into the fall. Right off, Peter is like, oh, great. Um, is there money? Because that would be a good thing. So that plays right into what I'm talking about, one of the three main focuses, which is money, because he needs it for him and his auntie. After that, they go into Peter's room, and they get into their shared love of science and physics. Peter shows his brilliance right off, and there's an exchange there between him and Iron Man. So that's that relationship. And then we get to Peter's main focus, or main motivation, which is the death of his Uncle Ben, where Peter outright says, if you can do what I can do, all the bad things that happens afterward 
is on you if you do nothing. So while he doesn't say my Uncle Ben got killed and now I have this responsibility, he's alluding to that. Anybody who knows anything about Spider-Man knows what he's talking about. And Tony uses that no different than in the comic book where he made Peter agree to backing him up before he even told him what the Registration Act entails. It's the same situation where he takes that father-son placeholder relationship and he knows that Peter looks up to him and he knows that Peter needs these resources and he uses them for his own gain. So that's kind of the relationship they have. He doesn't do it maliciously. He's just Tony Stark and he plays mind games. This is part of who he is as a character. And that's kind of the relationship that him and Spider-Man has. It's kind of a big brother, placeholder, father situation where Peter sees Tony and Tony manipulates that with the three motivations of Spider-Man which is money, the love of science and the just the responsibility and the weight that he carries due to the death of his uncle Ben. And they don't really talk about it in the movie, but the way Iron Man interacts with Spider-Man, you can tell he's been watching him for a while. Ever since he started his career, ever since he started saving people, you can tell he's been watching him. So I'm pretty sure he knows about Uncle Ben as well. Okay guys, with that I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you very much for watching over this past month or so and as always if you like what you are seeing Please subscribe Please thumbs up the video and if you can please share any of those things or all of those things are greatly Appreciated so what do you think about how they portray? Spider-man's and Tony Stark's relationship they're kind of back and forth in the Civil War movie do you think that it did the comic books justice uh, do you think that they flipped it nicely since the movie universe is so different from the comic book universe what do you think they could have done differently or better or do you think they shouldn't have touched it at all let's talk about it in the comment section into next video peace